Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of the action in the Champions League this week and yes I am wearing Milan they have not been probably the best performance but whenever Milan wins a Champions League game I'm very happy to wear a jersey of theirs and I actually realized yes I let you guys vote on which Milan home jersey I should use I realized that probably the third jersey from 98.99 is probably the closest thing I have to the current home jersey and since it's one of my favorite Milan jerseys, I'm more than happy to wear it. Uh, gotta say, yeah, that actually settled my Wednesday. Overall, a few general observations. A, you saw, I saw the title, both Lisbon teams getting huge wins. Absolutely big wins that uh, weren't necessarily expected. So uh, that's definitely one big storyline. Um, then I have to say, overall, I were not so many goals. I felt kind of, oh, uh, this is not good for the goal average of the Champions League. And yes, it fell from over 3 to around 2.7, as we will see. So it uh, was not a very much goal-filled round, and it needed the occasional game that went out of whack, like a Club Rouge at Porto, in a way. Um, the two days were also kind of had a very distinct flavor. It was kind of that the Tuesday was very much um, for the big name games. I mean, Bayern against Barcelona was where everyone was looking at, but I think Liverpool against Ajax was equally uh, interesting. It was also a very, very good uh, day for German teams who won everything in their path. And then Wednesday, um, thanks to Rangers Napoli being moved over, became kind of a, a more entertaining day, but it was it did not have the the big grab me game. Um, I, with the potential exception for uh, Juve Benfica, because we knew that there's a lot of that hin a lot is hinging on there. But we also saw that the both be, uh, both super teams in City and PSG had to actually work really, really hard. Um, and unlike uh, well, Tuesday was a great day for Germany, uh, it looked a little bit that it might be also the Wednesday, but then uh, the German teams all fell flat, uh, fell flat there. It was actually the Italian team, so did really uh, good and got three wins. Uh, no, not three wins, they got two wins, because one Italian team uh, should be excommunicated as Fiorentina North or Juventus, as you may know it. Uh, that team is just in deep, 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 deep trouble. I have, to, I have to say, I mean, both Lisbon teams put two teams in a really, really big trouble. There's another team that I find another big name that's already in trouble, that's Chelsea. Uh, only one one at home to Salzburg. A little bit unlucky, it has to be said. Uh, said. I mean, the performance was not great, but I think they were overall the better team than Salzburg. So Salzburg getting uh, another draw, allowing Milan to go top of the table uh, as well. So uh, all are just a few observations that I had. I mean, for me, Club Bruges is probably one of the biggest surprises out there. Don't have a Bruges jersey. Uh, other, uh, otherwise, they would be up there on on the wall. There was also something uh, uh, something negative, which I honestly semi expected, which was kind of the uh, pyro battle between the Marseille and the Frankfurt fans, which yeah, um, everyone was was afraid after Cologne against Nice uh, that there will be trouble, and there was trouble again. And yeah, I. Frankfurt fans have got themselves a good reputation, but that actually dents their reputation. But I have, have to say, many things often don't look as um, clean and as clear uh, at the moment as, as they seem at the moment. So that's what, 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 what I also want to say, because with the Cologne fans, you hear already there were some PSG people, ultras that were kind of masquerading and so on. You know, um, don't want to say much. Just condone, uh, just not condoning the actions that were taken there. Okay, let's run through through the games. I mean, Inter had a rather uh, surgical win over Pilsen. Uh, I mean, the goal by Jacko was one of the first chances. It was really well well taken. Then you know the uh, Bucher gets sent uh, off a rough tackle on Barella uh, at that moment. I, I, I actually, that ignited Pilsen a little bit to go forward, but uh, of, of course they get uh, caught on counter, they get uh, Jekyll assist Dumfries to make it 2-0, two, two but the shocker was definitely Sporting winning 2-0 over Spurs. Uh, the game was rather even, it was not necessarily a 2-0 scoreline, but if someone was uh, dangerous, it was Sporting. 
And then um, Yoris made already a, a big save to get a corner in, stop, uh, in stoppage time. And then Paulinho converts that one after Pedro Gonzalez cor uh, corner. And then Paulinho also assists Artur Gomez, who just runs through the entire Spurs defense and makes it 2-0 in the 93rd. So it was a late win. You thought that Spurs might escape Lisbon with a point, which would have served them well, but uh, did not work that way. Huge win for Liverpool. They desperately need, needed a win, not only for... Um, uh, the Champions League campaign, but in general for the feeling. And Ajax was not a pleasant opponent to uh, play against, also has, has to be said. Though Liverpool largely dominated the game, they didn't actually make that many chances. I mean, the first real chance was Salah's goal, in a way. Um, and then, uh, just 10 times later, Berghoz assists Kudus, uh, who, uh, what a rocket that he pulled in. And at that point, you really thought that Ajax are going to maybe hold on. I mean, Liverpool were pressing, but Ajax actually defended. And uh, Ajax and uh, defending are two words that don't go together very well, in my opinion. Uh, but they defend, defended very well and had even a big chance when um, Tadic makes a cross onto Daily Blind, who just puts the, um, the head wide. But in the 89th, it's Matip who heads in a uh, cross by Tsimikas and gives Liverpool a vital win. And you could see it even with Klopp after the game saying, Pooh, this was a big one because we really, really needed that. Um, also, a big one was uh, the win for Leverkusen over Atleti, um, especially in the second half. You, th you thought that everything is going against Le uh, Le Leverkusen. One action, I think uh, Schick hits the crossbar down on the rebound. It's put wide. Uh, it, 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 it goes against the upright. A little bit later, they again hit the post with a shot. Uh, in the end, it's Andrich um, and Diaby who scored the two goals in the 84th and the 87th, both assisted by Frimpong, giving Leverkusen a very much deserved win over Atleti. Very much deserved was also same in the same group, the 4 0 win by Club Rouge over Porto, which was kind of, kind of, kind of the uh, what result of the entire round. Because Porto is a really good team. I mean, t uh, top of the table or near top, top, top of the table in Portugal. But it was Jutkla, and actually, is this the guy from Barcelona? I was one, I should have uh, checked that. They get an early penalty, and then it just Perfect play for them. They just can hit Porto on the car contact. And they have to have Sova and Skov Olsen settle the game. And then very late on, uh, Nusa makes it a 4 0 thrashing of Porto. However, all the eyes and also mine, I mean, this was like this. This was the one, one game where we decided, okay, I put this on here by itself uh, and watch it and have the, um, you know, the goal show, if you like, uh, on the side, side screen where we're listening to Bayern against Barcelona. The scoreline sounds familiar, but the game was not. Um, Barcelona had many chances. They should have let, let it have Lev Lewandowski missed at least one absolute sitter. Uh, there should probably have been a penalty given for Bar Barcelona. At the half, Barcelona have to lead this by at least a goal, if not two. They outplayed Bayern. Bayern, Bayern were only in the game for about uh, five to ten minutes. And then Barcelona took over and created chances. However, what undid Barcelona is, as well as they go forward, this is so familiar for Barbers, as well as they look going forward, going backward uh, in the defense, they don't look good at all. And I mean, Alonso completely forgets about Hernandez, uh, who uh, heads in a Kimmich corner to make it 1-0. And then the open space for Leroy Sané after the very sweet Musiala pass to make it 2-0 for Barca, just uh, for, uh, for Bayern, just for, uh, four minutes later. It's just something to marvel. I mean, Sané thought, whoa, I can actually make a picnic here. Then the way he finished that uh, goal was e was e equally sweet. I mean, with the outside of his foot just curling it, it around. It was a really, really nice goal. Pedri then hits the uh, upright as well. But overall, I really got to say, this was very much uh, not so deserved win for Bayern. They were more clever. They had more uh, luck in in, 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 way in Barcelona. Offensively, I think on a normal, normally Lewandowski scores two there. Maybe he was had cheaters because he played against his former teammates. And defensively, Barcelona definitely needs some work. I mean, uh, positive signs, but yeah. I, I really cannot draw a riot conclusion because Barcelona really need to be aggrieved that they had, did not get the lead in, in the game and that, and that they did not go with the lead into halftime. Uh, and Bayern definitely can count themselves lucky of uh, winning this game overall. But then, you know, uh, it, it really just doesn't tell us much about Barca. 
Uh, Frankfurt, it was a tight game between Marseille and Frankfurt that was decided because uh, in defense uh, they were not... Um, um, Marseille made a horror. I mean, uh, it, I, I think it was a Hasebe pass to Lindstrom that was completely uh, mistimed, but Rangier puts it right on the path of Lindstrom, who makes it 1 0. In the second half, it was all. Um, it was not Hasebe, it was a Kamada uh, pass. Uh, it, it was actually. Frankfurt was the much better team, had many more chances, it probably could have gotten a second one. But again, the game was marred by uh, the Frankfurt and Marseille fans firing um, pyrotechnics at, at, at each other, which is just something you do not want to see. On the field, huge win for Frankfurt, setting their uh, campaign uh, more or less on just bad. Maybe they will manage to, if not getting out of the group, but making it into the Europa League, uh, depending on what Spurs and Sporting are doing. Uh, Wednesday, more early game, morning, I want to I wanna, I wanna say. I, of course, watched Milan Dynamo and I completely put Schachter Celtic aside. Uh, and I got to say, overall, I found that Milan, especially in first half, did not play all the bad, put a lot of pressure on Dynamo, uh, caused some errors, but also were very, very lax uh, in converting the chances. I mean, they were totally off target. Missing left and right, high end, and low minute started early when Giroud couldn't get the ball uh, to Leao. Then Leao a few times really uh, shot five for five wide. I think it was a free Tonali header. Fortunately, a justified penalty was given to Milan just before that, and Giroud makes 1 0, saddling the game. Then Leao assists Salamakers, who had had it in, making it 2 0. Um, and I was actually quite calm then. Of course, Orsic makes a score makes a goal in the 56 to kind of put me a little bit more on the edge of the field. But at that moment, then you you, you could really see the substitutions and the formation change for Milan was, let's go a little bit more solid on the back. And there was not really the big chance for Dinamo. Uh, Whilst Moise Theo Nandes nicely assists Pobega for a wonderful goal. Also got to mention a referee in the first half. I think he swallowed the whistle big time. There were two huge challenges, especially one on Theo Nandes, where he didn't even give a card or a foul. That were clear fouls. I mean, uh, the game... Fourth fortune it didn't escalate, but the game looked rather rough on the overall to me. So uh, that was definitely a little bit of a downer, I gotta say. Um, Schachter with a lucky draw against Celtic. Celtic I think, having more of, more of the chances, but Schachter scoring both goals. I think the Mudrik finish uh, was quite good. But overall, yeah, Celtic probably should have gotten a little bit more. Celtic fans also not endearing themselves to the general public, but I understand from where they're coming from with the banner regarding the crown, but you know. Uh, completely the opposite for Rangers. Totally in off the Queen, even with the choreography, or uh, Tifo, uh, with the Queen up up, up there. It, it's just so you see the, the two uh, polarities uh, that is also given by those two uh, teams. Uh, it was, in the first half, a rather entertaining end-to-end -end game. Chances on both sides. You always had to have uh, the feeling that Napoli has a little bit the finer edge to them. Uh, however, uh, Rangers put the fight in, in there. And so it was really a game on the knife's edge. However, it got then decided with a penalty call. Not quite, but with Sands completely imploding. And uh, Rangers going down to 10 men, that didn't necessarily help. Zielinski steps up for a penalty, which is saved. Politano puts it in, but there was an infringement. So the goal that counted did not count, and then the penalty had to be retaken. Although I still, I, th I heard now that it was Politano who ran in early, but on the other side, I also got to say, if the infringement is on part of the um, uh, attacking team, do we have to retake the penalty? I guess we do because there was a goal, so where do you stop it? But it was really, really weird. In any case, Zielinski in a classical case of I know you know that I know, chooses the same corner and it was literally the same penalty and McGregor saves it again. Uh, it was a really, really odd. Um, then Politano. So it's nil-nil. You think this is the energy that uh, they need, but then another penalty is given for Napoli this time. Also justified, I think. And Politano makes it one-nil. And from that moment on, there was only one winner, and it all went now Napoli's way with Raspatori in the 85th, settling the game. Uh, and then probably the third one through Ndombele, uh, assist by Angisa, was a goal too high 
But Napoli really look for real at this moment. They are really, really in excellent, excellent shape. Not something we can say about Chelsea. A game that they largely dominated, but uh, did not really create many good chances. Salz, but Salzburg was hanging on. Uh, then Sterling gives them the lead and they thought they can play it home rather nicely. A uh, few changes made for Salz, Salzburg and suddenly Adamo assists Okafor. He just had come, come, come on. To make it 1-1 and this was also he did not hit it right it just went you know got a slice it. it went in then Chelsea pressed again had urgency behind them which were missing completely but they cannot find the winner and early on in this group Chelsea with only one point don't look good and Salzburg out of the nominated two big opponents they got two points out of that one more than they expected on, on top of that um, sporting director friend is also seemingly in talks with Chelsea among the candidates, I let's see if uh, Chelsea will get an uh, Austrian um, sporting director. I, I also got to say it's not part of this video, but owner Todd Bolli really, really endeared himself to all foot football fans with his American ideas and, you know, making also a Chelsea football group, blah, 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 blah. And I guess that's why he wants to hi uh, look at the Red Bull group very much. Real Madrid, the movie of that game sounded so familiar, having trouble. Um, Kunku uh, missing many chances, uh, Leipzig should have probably taken a lead. And then later on, 80th minute, Fede Valverde makes it 1-0 and in the 91st, Asensio makes it 2-0. Out of really hard work, uh, not looking comfortable, but in the end, Real Madrid turned out late as we had it the entire uh, early season. Not much I can tell you about that goal is in Copenhagen and Sevilla. Um, really, that was not on my radar that, that much. City against Dortmund. Dortmund actually did something very undortmund like is that they, they defended really, really well and frustrated City. And then they even take the lead through Bellingham, who had in a Royce cross where two other Dortmund players would, would, would have been offside, but Bellingham out of nowhere, boom, in. And you really then thought that they will hang on to that, that result. Um, but Guardiola immediately puts on the car, uh, cavalry with Alvarez, Bernal Silva, Phil Foden. All come, 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 come on. But it is a very un -Guardiola like goal that turns the tide with uh, stones. Just putting a rocket in where the goal it didn't look good. But you know, he's not a great goal. And then Haaland gets a slatan winner. That was a great goal to win it for City, but it was very, very much hard work. Uh, Juve looked great for about 15 minutes, took a fully deserved lead through uh, Milik, who uh, had it in uh, a corner, but I then, I at that moment I thought, and Allegri is gonna have them now sit back and uh, let uh, Benfica come and defend it, which is his old mojo. The problem is Juve cannot do this anymore. All the energy that they had for the first 10, 15 minutes just went away and Benfica took over and never relinquished uh, the game any anymore. The penalty I have to say is unlucky because um, Miretti wants to play the ball. This was more an accidental step on the other on player. I'm not sure if we really need to give this as, as a penalty. Uh, however, João Mario easily converts that one, uh, taunting a little bit the other audience as well. So yeah, uh, Bonucci had to step in there and then David Neres and the 55th gets the winner for Benfica and it's all fully deserved. Juve in real big trouble and when you listen to the board, they can't even get rid of the coach, although it's probably high time to get rid of Allegri because they cannot, because he's on high wages, they still have to pay off, uh, I guess, Sarri and especially Pirlo, uh, who, who, who doesn't have a job. So it it's rather rough for you at the, at, 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 at the moment. And we really have to look at this Ronaldo transfer as this big sliding doors moment where Juve was so dominant. And then they wanted to get cute and lost it all. And then in, in addition, the Super League. And PSG also had to fight hard because Chéry, a wonderful goal, make, makes 1-0, then Messi from a short, short distance 1-1. Uh, and then while the game was really much, much better as soon as Messi assists Mbappé, was only one winner. And then Verratti with a brilliant pass to Neymar. And it's 3-1 PSG. But uh, the scoreline, you know, if this is a one-goal win or even a draw for Maccabi, that would have been just fair, uh, gotta say. So, 
Let's look at the standings. We have in Group 1 Napoli uh, now ahead of Liverpool, Ajax and Rangers. It's a rather, rather tight group there. Then in Group B, uh, Club Rouge, uh, Leverkusen and Atletico. So Atleti already finding themselves in trouble le on level with uh, le uh, Leverkusen. Uh, Bayern dominates that group now and Barca have now a double against Inter, which uh, the game at Inter days will be a huge one. We'll see that coming up um sporting and spurs seem to be now the favorites in group d although frankfurt has an in now with a double against spurs milan have control over group e however it's i think deceiving and they have chelsea coming up next and i think by that time i think chelsea will look already much much better so uh gotta see and chelsea definitely needs to get going uh real madrid will ease through their group and then it's really uh probably Schachter I would expect Schachter to uh, have a big say in their Leipzig, maybe. But, you know, they have the big... Uh, on paper, Leipzig should, should make it, but it doesn't look li uh, likely. City and Dortmund still the classes of their, their group and PSG and Benfica now in firm control of Group H. Um, as for positive and negative, the, the biggest change, and I now create an ag ag aggregate ra rating, but it's not yet um, perfect. Benfica, Club Bruges and Frankfurt uh, are the big winners, also the two Milan teams and Napoli, so a uh, big night for Italian teams. To be fair, uh, those three Italian teams played probably all against the weakest opponents in their group, so uh, it's not yet uh, party time for uh, the Italian teams, but we have also Sporting Inter, Liverpool, a big bounce back, and PSG, Bayern, Real Madrid, City, you know, all, all the big names. I find it curious that Atleti is in there, but you know, with the Porto loss, that actually helps Atleti, so their chances get boosted despite them losing to Lever Leverkusen. On the ne negative side, Spurs, Barcelona, Ajax, Porto, Chelsea, Juve. Sounds all about right. As for the favorites at the moment, it is City ahead of Bayern against PSG and then PSG. Not much has changed there. So it uh, will be interesting. I'm uh, very happy to see that Milan actually moved up in uh, eighth place. And then for the games for the uh, next time, this is after the international break. So 4th and 5th, 5th of October. If we look here, I think Ajax Napoli is a huge one. Liverpool Rangers because, you know, Scotland, England is big. Um, I want to see what Club Rouge can do, but of course it's Inter Barca that definitely takes the pie. And I think Frankfurt Spurs could also be an interesting one there. Chelsea Milan, uh, one of the glamour fixtures come, coming up. And I think Benfica PSG, this will go for first place in that group as well. So, yeah. Let me know what you thought about the Champions League fixtures. Uh, this is Midweek. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so to get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.